And when he is ready, when God is ready to turn your life around, nothing and no one can stop what God has purposed to do. Amen. And I tell you, I'm smiling because I know people of God without a shadow of a doubt. God is doing some miraculous things in the lives of his people. And for everyone who desires to live for him, he will not forget your labor of love. Amen. So I want you to get your Bibles, your pens, your highlighters, your tablets, notepads, computers, laptops, iPads, whatever it is you want to have right now to make sure that you can get all that you need to receive at this moment and then take it a little bit further in your week of doing your study time with him. I, um, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to know God. And I'm blessed to know him in the way that I know him. I'm grateful that he has chosen me in this hour to deal with such a task that has not been in my circle of Christendom, has not been dealt with. I'm grateful to God that he has given us, his people, the opportunity to be totally free. God is the God that delivers. Yes, he, is. he is the God that heals. There is nothing too hard for him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you right now? God is the God of the possible. There could be impossibilities within your life, within my life, within the scope of our minds. But when you add God to that equation, people of God, I want you to understand clearly that God knows no impossibilities. God is the God of the suddenlies. God is such a God of the suddenlies that today you can be broke, busted, and disgusted. And tomorrow you can be the number one leader of the riches on Wall Street. The people of God, that the people that serve God must understand that God is so awesome that he is the God of the 24-hour miracles and breakthrough. This time tomorrow, your life can be so different, you will have to introduce yourself to you because it is that kind of God we serve. So I come today nothing short of revealing some things to you, sharing some things with you, but more than anything, pricking your heart to know all that God would have you to know about this subject, about what we are going to share today so that you and I and our loved ones and our family members can be free to live the life that Jesus paid for on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Jesus came, people of God, that we might have life and that life more abundantly. Yes. Jesus came not for you to struggle and be bound, not for you to be bent over in the spirit, not for you to go through vicious cycles over and over and over again. Not for the devil to hem you up and take your stuff like he comes to be a bully in your life. The Lord never ever intended for your life to be bullied by the dark side. We said last time in our teaching that Luke 10, 19 gives us comfort in knowing that we have been given authority over all the power of the enemy That's right. and nothing, somebody say nothing, nothing, nothing shall be able to harm us. You have to get that deep down in your spirit because I promise you as I was preparing this lesson, as I was studying this lesson, the enemy tried to dupe me. The enemy tried to, you know, uh, bully me. The enemy tried to make me change my mind about teaching what I'm about to teach. Oh, but people of God, there was a Holy Ghost on the inside of me that spoke up out of my mouth and said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, the earth, the sea, and the heavens, or the second heavens we're talking about in the name of Jesus. So I want you to allow me to give you something that maybe you've never heard before, to give you a little bit of what you have already heard, and then allow the Holy Spirit to meet you where you are, that deliverance 
will be our portion. Yes, it is. Do you want or need deliverance today yes, in your life? I do. Yes, yes. Have you been doing what we have encouraged you to do by dealing with your foundational bondages? Yes. By, you know, writing down everything you know about your foundation. Stop lying to yourselves and stop trying to make your life better than what it really was. You're not trying to deny anybody the respect or the honor that they're due. But what you want to do is get the devil out into the open and let the light shine upon him. That he has no more secret place to hide and to maneuver in your life and to deal with you like a puppet on a string. And then he's pulling your strings how he chooses to. This is what we're talking about today. Hey, I hope you've taken the time to break some soul ties. List all your people that you have been sexually active with. List all the people that you have had an a inordinate, affectionate relationship with, which can be heterosexual or homosexual. Not necessarily all of it is homosexual, but inordinate affections can just be affection that is out of line. And so, people of God, I pray that you have had this time to deal with your foundation. To deal with the things that you know without a shadow of a doubt. That's me. The, th the teachers that we've been given. But today, I want to show you some things in the word. And then I want to show you some things that I didn't get actually from the word. But I've been studying these from these different people who have definitely studied this subject better than I can. Today, we're going to talk about power against marine witchcraft. Or another teaching calls it. The Marine Kingdom, deliverance from spirit husband and spirit wife. If those who are with us for the first time don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I won't leave you there. I'm going to give you an explanation about what we're talking about and what I'm saying in reference to spirit husband and spirit wife. What, I, what, what I'm referencing, Marine Kingdom. That's a kingdom that many of us have never heard of. But that's a kingdom that is solely in the dark side or on the dark side. That's a kingdom that Satan's rules and reigns are involved in. But this kingdom is responsible for the spirit husbands and the spirit wives that are attached to God's people. Remember I shared with you that there are 70%, 7 out of 10 men and 7 out of 10 women sitting in the house of the Lord on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or two or three times a week. And they are in the house of the Lord bound by these spirits. They are in the house of the Lord bound by this devil. And I want to first start, start with a scriptural reference that this is so. You could have people frequencing, frequencing, frequent, frequent, frequencing the house of the Lord on a daily, weekly basis and still be bound by these spirits. I want you to turn with me first and foremost to Mark chapter 1. And I have a lot today. I may not be able to get it all in, but we're going to pray before we leave, so I may have to cut it off and then pick it up on Wednesday. But I tell you, this is important. Young people of peace, don't close your ears. This is not above your head. This is not for your mom and your dad. It's for you too. Because this is something that you will have to know if you don't need to know it now. And if you're connected to any bloodlines that have this in it, you need to know it right now today. So pay attention, get your Bibles, and let's go. In Mark chapter 1, I want to show you how that you can be in the house of God. And you can have spirits that are not of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for helping me today. I thank you for being God in my life. And I thank you for teaching this word with power, with clarity. And I thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow this taught word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 1, go with me to verse 21. And I want you to read all of Mark, but I don't have the time to do so. But you read all of Mark chapter 1. Look what it says in verse 21. It says, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. That's talking about Jesus. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out. Did you just hear what I read? Yep. There was a man in the synagogue that had an unclean spirit. Could I say it this way? I know we don't use this word for going to a building, but I'm going to say it just for clarity's sake. There was a man sitting in church 
with an unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit cried out, look what he said, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Look at verse 39. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. I want to show you, people of God, that Jesus, when he showed up on the scene at the synagogue, when he showed up where the religious folks were, where the, the believers were, where those who were celebrating their relationship with God, he showed up on the scene and then he began to disturb the services. Because the demons in there begin to recognize the anointed one. Hallelujah. It began to recognize that that was Jesus on the scene. And immediately the unclean spirit began to speak. The, not, not the man now. The Bible says, they, the, the un, and he cried out. Not the man that he is referring to the unclean spirit. But this man wasn't at the park. This man wasn't in the ballroom. This man wasn't on leisure or at the beach. This man was in church with an unclean spirit, sitting down, listening to the preacher, listening to the songs, clapping his hands, swaying from side to side, and guess what? Unclean spirit was in him. But Jesus did not ignore it. Jesus did not say, we're going to pass by. Come on, let's go ahead and play a song and, and, and remove him out, out of the sanctuary. We, we don't want no disturbance. We want to continue with business as usual. No, 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 no. Jesus dealt with it because he said this. Be quiet and come out of him. The, 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 the demonic spirit, the unclean spirit, began to talk to Jesus and tell him, oh, I know who you are. See, they recognize Jesus. Demons know what they can and cannot do. So when you truly have the, the spirit of the Lord and the, the, the hope of glory on the inside of you, they recognize that in you. So there is no need to fear. And so when Jesus had this encounter with this unclean spirit, he might have threw the man around a little bit, you know, and everybody, everybody in the sanctuary, eyes were real big. They were like, wow, what is this? Because it tells you they were shocked. They were amazed. They were mesmerized. Why? Because deliverance wasn't happening in the church. Everything else was going on but deliverance. That is why you have seven out of ten men and seven out of ten women struggling, trying to keep their head above water, trying to make their lives work, trying to get things right. But they're constantly fighting these shadows. They're constantly dealing with this stuff that every time they move forward, they're, excuse me, being knocked backward. These seven men, seven out of ten men, and seven out of ten women are wanting their marriages. They're wanting to live holy. They're wanting to love God. They're wanting to serve him. But they've been bound by an unclean spirit. The unclean spirit does not say, doesn't say in here that the unclean spirit came to him through one way or the other. So we don't know if the unclean spirit came by way of his own actions, his own decisions, his own choices of being sexually immoral, but we do know that the unclean spirit was there. And we do know that the unclean spirit recognized Jesus. And we do know that Jesus took authority over the unclean spirit right there in church. So that's where the power should be, in the house of the Lord. That's where the power of God should resonate. So that people, when they come in, Jesus, who is the word, the word incarnate, can come up in the place, walk around, and begin to break people free. Because this unclean spirit had this man bound. And we don't know for how long. We don't know if his unclean spirit came by way of generational curses. All we know is that he was in church. He might have been a son of Abraham. He might have been in a lineage of people that love God. But guess what? He was bound. Yes. Do you recognize that believers 
Christians, those who go to church every Sunday, can have demons influencing their lives, can have demons controlling and manipulating their lives, can have them making choices and doing things behind the scenes that they would never ever want anybody to know? Do you recognize that this was in the church where Jesus saw this, uh, um, where, where the, this uh, unclean spirit recognized Jesus and begin to let everybody know, I know him. He the real deal. And Jesus said, be quiet, shut up. Just come on out of him and come on out now. And then he also, I showed you verse 39, because Jesus went about in Galilee to all of their synagogues. And guess what? The Bible records he was casting out demons. Turn to Mark 5. This is getting a little close to where I want to be. There were some interesting facts that we learned about the unclean spirit in chapter 1 of Mark. The unclean spirit was inside of a man. The man was in church or in service. The spirit had a voice. So demons have voices. Many times when you think you're talking to a person, you are literally talking to one of those demons inside that person if that person's life is carrying an unclean spirit. So the spirit had a voice and the spirit spoke. The spirit recognized Christ. The spirit manifested in the anointed one's presence. So that tells us if spirits aren't manifesting, is Jesus on board? If spirits aren't literally coming out, is Jesus on board? Because that spirit manifested when the real, true, authentic power of Christ was present. The spirit wanted to be left alone. It says, don't leave me alone. Leave us alone. Leave, leave us alone. There was more than one spirit in the man because he said, leave us alone. The unclean spirit did the speaking. The spirits were afraid of Christ because they thought Christ came to destroy them, which he had. And these spirits knew who Jesus was, the Holy One of God. But this unclean spirit was uncivil and confrontational. So you must recognize that there are some demons that's going to leave your body and leave your life without any notice. But then there are some that's so wicked and evil, they're trying to fight to hold on. But when that true anointing of God comes upon the scene, they got to bow Amen. and come out. This man was sitting in the service and he was not alone. You could see a fine man in service. You could see a nice looking woman in service. You could see a beautiful child in service. And you're looking at the hour and you are enamored at how they look and how well they're dressed and how, how green they are. And all the while, he or she is sitting there, but they're not alone. No, they don't have a spouse. No, they don't have a row of people next to them. But what they have inside is an unclean spirit. He was sitting there on the pew listening to the preacher, bobbing his head to the music, while yet sporting the unclean spirit. This man had an unclean spirit influencing his life. What does that mean, people of God? When you have an unclean spirit in your life, listen to some of the things that that means for your life. When you have an unclean spirit, it means you are morally corrupted. Morally corrupted. When you have an unclean spirit, you are sexually perverted. Sexually perverted. Anytime an unclean spirit resides in your life, it is going to lead you to a life of perversion. When you have an unclean spirit, it causes you to have a life whereby you are debased, whereby you are lustful, whereby you are lewd in your thought and in your life. Does any of this sound familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. An unclean spirit will literally debase you to the point where you will feel like you're nothing because you have gone so far down 
You have done so much evil, so much perversion. You have been with this one and been with that one and been with the other one, all the while mixing it all together. Why? Because that unclean spirit is influencing your life. The unclean spirit was so powerful in this man's life that when Jesus dealt with it, the Bible says it convulsed the guy and then he finally came out. But you have to not be concerned about how it's going to come out. If you recognize any of those things I just mentioned about an unclean spirit, if you're morally corrupt, your morals are, are slim to none, you're sexually perverted. You have all type of sexual perversions that you have participated in. And let me tell you something. You can walk away from the lifestyle and you can try to not do it. But the demons are still inside. They're still housed in you because you open yourself up to the unclean spirit. If you're lustful. If you can't control your thoughts, your mind is just so perverted. You think about anything. You just do anything. Your mind is leading you to, to places like you never, ever imagined because your imagination can take you around the world when you've never left your home. This unclean spirit can make your life hell. Do you hear me? But now I want to show you where this unclean spirit comes from in Mark 5. Let's go to Mark 5. Mark 5, I want to show you a different level of unclean spirit. And I want you to see where this unclean spirit in Mark 5 is at another dimension. And, and, and even in that one, it did say let us alone. But in Mark 5, it's going to say just a tad bit differently. Let me get my notes together because I'm skipping so much stuff. But it's all right. Let me see what I want to say here. Hold up. I'll come back to it. Mark 5, I want to go to um, chap chapter 5. Let's look at verses 1 and 2 first. Let's look at this. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with what? Unclean An spirit. unclean spirit. Now, let's go to verse 7. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And the unclean spirit answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. Remember that? They ran where? Violently into the place, into the sea, and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. I want to show you something about this. The sea is very important and very significant. I don't know about you, but I have read this particular text for so many times. And I always wondered, why did Jesus bargain with them? Why did he obey their command or their asking him, can they go into the swine? And why that once he, he allowed them to go into the swine, the Bible records that they ran in the steep and they drowned in the sea. I wanted to know what was so significant about them going into swine. And then the, the swine went into the sea. 
What was going on? Well, I got the answer now. First and foremost, I want to say that this man here who had the unclean spirit, his spirit had a name. And his spirit was named Legion. And legions can be from 3,000 to 5,000 soldiers. This particular thing says it had 2,000 demons in it. Do you recognize that an unclean spirit is nothing to play with? Do you recognize that when the unclean spirit is possessing a person, which is the strong man, it's not lying. It's not, it's not you know, cheating. It's not stealing. You're, the strong man in people's lives is the unclean spirit. And it hides itself because it doesn't want to be exposed, but I'm here to expose it. The unclean spirit is there to keep the door open for every other kind of spirit to come on in. So now you're thinking that you're dealing with one situation or one particular area because you have this lustful thing going on. So you think it's just the fact that you can't control your eyes. You know, you can't control your thoughts. But it's literally an unclean spirit that has many spirits that it just allows the door to your life to be open to all of these different spirits because you have made the decision or your generations have made the decision to be sexually immoral people. The unclean spirit can come in by way of you or whom you're connected to. So let's take a walk down this new stuff that I told you you've never heard before. Some of you may have and some of you may have not. But in this particular thing, I want to talk about the sea right now. I want to talk about the water. Remember, I said we were dealing with the marine kingdom. There are some facts, people of God, that you must know about the water kingdom. First and foremost, I must say on the onset, that this is not preached in the churches on a daily basis or even many hours, many of many of our churches, not at all. But there, it's being taught somewhere. And it's being taught in churches that believe that these spirits are coming in to keep people in bondage. And what I want to say is this. There are people, you may know them, you may work with them, they may, they may be your, your cubicle friends. They may be the person you go to lunch with, but there are some people who literally worship bodies of water. There are people who literally give themselves over to the marine kingdom to actually be trained in what they want them to do in capturing the lives of innocent people. I don't want to go there right now. But I, will, I want you to write it down just in case I don't get to it. Psalms 8, verses 4 through 8. Isaiah 27 and 1. And those are the scriptures that I want to base some of this on. But listen to this. Marine witchcraft is one of the most destructive evil powers there is. It is one of Satan's most powerful strongholds. Children of God must learn to deal with it. The marine kingdom is also the least kingdom understood of the three strongholds, which are heaven and earth. The heavens and the earth are the other two. But the marine kingdom is the one that's least understood. Many nations and many individuals who, who live on this earth will not advance in life unless they deal with this kingdom. You will never be able to move forward in life, hear me, unless you take time to deal with the marine witchcraft that has been worked in your life, in your generation, in your ancestors, and it is now causing you to be stalemated, stagnated, and miserable. It is to be noted that practically in all nations, there are people who worship bodies of water. These water spirits, listen to their description. They are proud, mean, wicked, heartless, and stubborn. These marine spirits are nothing to play with. 
But I promise you, they are nothing compared to our great God. Amen? Amen. Now, in the beginning, God made man to subdue the earth. You remember in Genesis, he gave us the, the, the power and the dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth. Remember that? Yeah. He gave us dominion over all the flesh of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every creature that move it upon the face of the earth. That's what he gave us. But then along the way, you know, Adam tripped up, messed up, and in his disobedience, we lost that. But we know the last Adam, Jesus, regained that and redeemed us back to that place where we still now have authority and dominion over everything that God has created All right. with his hands. That's Psalms 8. Just tell you about it. God said he has given us dominion over all the works of his hands. And he has put all things under our feet. We want you to understand, people of God, that these spirits are nothing to play with in and of ourselves. But I promise you, when you know your authority and when you know what Jesus has truly done on the cross for you, you will not back up. But you will fight like your very life depends upon it. You must recognize and you must realize that you are God's workmanship. Recreated in Christ to be a priest and a king to reign on this earth. Tell yourself, say, I am. I am. A priest. A priest. A king. And a king. And a king. Here on, earth. Here on earth. Now, Jesus was also manifested to destroy the works of the devil. When he was leaving out, Jesus also reminded us that we would do greater works. So please know this, keeping this in mind, we have nothing to fear. We have everything to gain to find out more about this unheard of kingdom that exists right before us. And guess what? It is responsible for stealing so much from us because of our willful disobedience or our ancestors' blatant sin. Do you know water spirits can cause your business to be stagnated to the point where you never move out and move forward in life? They deal in trading commerce more than anything, and they will shut you down when they get a hole, a foothold in your life where you could never have a productive business, no matter what you try to do. But this is what you have to understand. It is our responsibility to learn what we don't know. It is our responsibility to gain knowledge. You must understand that when we gain the knowledge that we're supposed to have, we gain it so we can bring liberty to every captive because it's our right as disciples of Christ. It is our right as believers. And it is our right for those who live their lives in obedience to God's word to bring deliverance to all who are in bondage to the devil's um, shenanigans and to the devil's evil. So I'm going to share some facts with you today about the water that makes the water so significant, physically and spiritually. I know this blew my mind when I first started hearing about the Marine Kingdom and when I recognized that the Marine Kingdom was connected to the spirit husbands and the spirit wives was connected to spirit marriages, to evil marriages. When I saw the connection, I was blown away. And then I had the opportunity one morning, going in my phone and Googling some things about the Marine Kingdom, I read an entire story about a man who was a little boy at one time, and his dad brought him to the waters, dropped him off like he was dropping him off at school, left him in the waters to go into the waters and learn how to be a Marine witch in the waters. A little boy now. People literally worship bodies of waters and they turn their children over to worship these things as well. So this little boy who is now delivered and exposed in this kingdom had a great grand article of all the details and I read it from beginning to end. 
He had pictures that I kind of skim over because they were so demonic in, in sight. I didn't want to really look at them. But I promise you, this little, this man told about the way in which they do things and operate even at the beach. When somebody is just all of a sudden lost and they, and, and they show up on the other side of the, of, the, of, the, of the tide, that's a marine witch that has had, had that, that person's body, that has done something in that person's body. Don't be alarmed. I'm telling you, you got to know this because they're stealing your money. They're stealing your virtues. They're stealing all of your, your joy. They're stealing your health. They're destroying your family. They got you bound with unclean spirits. You're married to a spirit husband. You're married to a spirit wife. You got an evil marriage. You got stuff going on in your body. Your mind is acting crazy. You don't know which way to go. And somebody must have said, Lord, I'm tired. Yes. And I want to be delivered. Yes. So we're going to talk about the waters. Because this is something I, I, I knew a little bit of it. I heard about it for a little minute. I saw a little bit of it. But I stayed away from it. And I stayed away from it because I was told by these giant, uh, 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 what were they, uh, deliverance ministers, that it was a powerful thing. And you didn't want to just go into that. But yeah, let me tell you something. When God says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, he, he, but he means it. When he said that these signs shall follow them that believe, that they shall what? Cast out devils? He meant it. When he, he called his disciples to himself, the Bible says he gave them power over unclean spirits. Yes, he did. When he sent them out two by two, read your word. He said he sent them out two by two, but he gave them power over unclean spirits. The first fact that we want to look at concerning the water is right here. Only water and the Holy Spirit existed in the beginning. Genesis 1 and 3. I'm not going to turn to every scripture, but I'm going to give you the scriptural reference. The first fact, only water and the Holy Spirit existed in the beginning. And I'm going to try to make it to where uh, I can get to in my notes, where you see how the, whole, how the spirit of um, husband, wife, and spirit, husband, and spirit, wife, how they come out of this particular kingdom. Fact number two, it takes the word of God to put water in its place. Genesis 1 and 9, God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. So it takes the word of God to put water in its place. Number three, water is dominating if not controlled. Genesis 1, 9 and 10. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he what? Seas. And God saw that it was good. Where did the swine go into? Water. The sea. sea. They went into the water. I want you to see that. Now, the earth people of God existed at this period but it was subdued and dominated by the waters. The earth was there, but it could not actually be seen as the earth with the, with the trees and with the, the ground being separated, what have you, why? Because the water was in what? Total control until God began to make and move the water and put it in place. Fact number four, where water powers dominate, nothing else is productive. If there is the marine kingdom that's dominated in your family, in your home, in your marriage, there will not be much productivity. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. I'll read it quickly. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. The earth people of God could only start producing anything worthwhile after it had been released from the dominion of the water. Prior to then, though it existed, the earth, it could not produce anything. Do you see your life being the earth? 
and the waters of the marine kingdom have flooded into your life through the sexual uh, misconduct, through this foundational bondage that nobody wants to deal with. And we're dealing with the sexual thing because, of course, these are the areas in which the enemy works in to get into your life. And then it continues to perpetuate itself down the line for your children. And then your children never, ever get the truth. And then their children are now subject to and bound by these spirits. And now everybody's life is just full of a mess. Fact number five. The earth could only accommodate man when water gave way. Fact number six. The spirits within the waters are very competitive. I won't read it all, but just Genesis 1, 20 and 21. These spirits are competitive. When God began to have the water to bring forth and the earth to bring forth, then the water wanted to do something. It wanted to jump in. Read that in your own time. Now, prior to when the earth started to produce at the instruction of God, the waters had not produced anything worthwhile. But when God told the waters to give way to the earth and told the earth to produce seed and herbs, the waters were also ready to start producing. It was as if the water was ready to compete with the earth and showing off its ability to produce. Let me put that in everyday situations for you. Do you know people that they aren't trying to do anything? They have no thoughts. They have no type of ideas. They're not trying to accomplish much at all. But the minute you decide that you are going to get up and you're going to change direction and you're going to do something worthwhile and you're going to go do this exercise, go get into a new business, go join into a, 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 to go to school or whatever, and you start doing something new. Now the water spirit that's controlling that other person's life causes them now to want to compete with you. Now, if you go to the gym, they want to go to the gym. If you're going into school, they want to go into school. But before that, you tell your friend, you know, girl, I'm about to go join this um, Zumba class, or I'm about to um, <clears throat> start a business. Now they are competing with you, wanting to stop you from going forth. Why? Because their full potential or the, their, 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 their full uh, purpose is to dominate you and to compete with you to bring you to a place of staleness where you just walk away from it and say, don't worry about it, I'm not going to do it. Have you, have you known that in your life? That is an indication that you are dealing with some marine spirits. Fact number seven, there are certain spirits that reside with the waters. In Mark chapter 5, where we just read, it talked about the unclean spirit and how they had gone into the swine. I'm going to read 12 again. It says, and all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And fourth word, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and, had, and, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. There are certain kinds of spirits that reside with the waters. And we want you to understand something. When Jesus said to the man, come out of them, come out of him, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him what was his name. He answered legion. Because a legion people of God, as I said, around 3,000 to 5,000 soldiers. That here we, are, we have many spirits rushing into the sea. And since they could not dominate the land, this is what happened with those swine. Since those spirits could not dominate the land anymore, when Jesus told them to come out of that man, they asked him, could they go into the swine? Because they had lost their power where they were. So they could not dominate the land any longer. So they requested to go back where they were from, which was the sea. They went back to their abode. They were already from there, but they came upon the land because they wanted to stay in Maine. We're getting closer to my point. They wanted to stay in the land or on the land, but Jesus ref refuted them and did not allow them to do so. So they asked, could we go back where we came from? 
That is why they went into the swine and went into the sea. Now, fact number eight. The waters have their own princes. Jot down Ezekiel 26, verse 16. They have princes in the water, and the waters have its own princes. I'm not going to read all of that. Fact number nine. The water has its own power. Zechariah 9 and 4. But this is what I want to say about that. While the waters, Isaiah, have their own powers, I want you to know that power belongs to God. So even though the waters have certain kinds of powers, you must understand that they got that because every bit of power, I don't care who has it, it all belongs to God. Fact number 10. This is where I want to get your attention. A whole city was buried in the sea. When I read that article that I told you about, I literally saw the city under the waters. There is literally a whole city, people of God. Like you have a city here on the land. There is a city under the water. And this is where your glory is. This is where your blessings are. This is where your financial breakthrough lies. This is where your marriages are. This is where your deliverance of your family is. Because what these spirits come to do is to steal your virtues and to hold them hostage under the water. A whole city, the Bible says, in Ezekiel 26, verse 19, our entire city was buried in the sea. And I saw this man's drawing. I saw all of the stuff that he wrote and all the things that he said. And listen to me. It is organized just as your cities are. They have princes. They have powers. They have people in charge. Because guess what? The devil always wants to replicate what God is and what he has. When one reads the Bible carefully, I mentioned this to Bernie some time ago when I first started getting my hands on this. You will realize that the Bermuda Triangle and the lost city of the Atlantis are not just mere fiction after all. You mentioned to me that was what? Places that planes and stuff flew over and they never did find them anymore. Places that planes and stuff flew over and they never found them anymore. I even said when I was studying this that this last plane, that plane that was coming from Malaysia or going to Malaysia, that plane may be in the water spirit's house. Yeah. Because you can't find, they can't find anything that, or the last thing I heard, they didn't find anything about it. So people of God, I'm telling you, this is real. But I'm going to bring it down to, to where we're going, then we're going to get out of here. Fact number 11. This is what I want you to hear and hear it again. I said it before, but hear it again. The sea is a glory swallower. The glory of an entire city was swallowed up by the sea. Check out Ezekiel 27 and verse 27. An entire sea was swallowed up. Or our entire city was swallowed up by the sea. It's a glory swallow. Do you hear many times when we're on the line with Dr. D.K. Olakoya and he'll say, um, drinkers of blood and eaters of flesh, or he'll deal with the swallowers? That's because there are demonic powers that will try to even swallow you whole. I remember when I was in this ministry here in Florida, my pastor began to say that the, that that um, a witch would be a bone in her throat, meaning that, uh, or she would be a bone in a witch's throat, meaning that if a witch tried to swallow her whole, that she would not, or he would not be able to swallow her because it would she would be a, like a bone to them that they would have to cough it back up. Now, I know many of you don't know about all this type of stuff, but you have to get to know it because you have to get free. It's time to stop dealing with the same old mess over and over. It's time to God go, stop. It's time to stop going through the same old vicious cycle. It's time to stop being bound when Jesus came to make you free. It's time to stop letting the devil beat you over the head and tell you you're nothing and you'll never be nothing. And this is all you'll ever be because he's lied to you because he wants to take you out. Fact number 12. The seas has its own wealth that it gives to those who serve it. It's no secret, I told you, that people serve the waters, people serve the seas. There are people who go and pray before bodies of waters 
to destroy different cities and nations and different countries or what have you. Do, I remember when my uncle, he stayed behind for Hurricane Katrina. And he told me, he said, I never heard the noises that I heard when it began to rain for that particular hurricane. He said those noises were unbelievable. He said, and, and it was so vicious. This is what he was communicating to me. And now I get it. Now I get what was really going on. Because water out of control can be very dangerous. The last, the second to last fact. The sea can break and destroy one's business and one's enterprise. In Ezekiel 27, 34, it reads this. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. So if you are trying, struggling, getting your business off the ground, if you deal with and stand up to this marine kingdom that is constantly causing you not to get what you're supposed to have, stopping you from going forward, you will be able to have all that God has said. Listen to this. What we have established so far with what I've shared with you among these facts, is that though the waters have has um, its own controlling spirits and its own controlling powers, these powers and these of our spirits are all restricted and controlled by the word of God and by the power of God. That's why you can't sit in church, sit in a building, sit in a service, and think that's all it is to your life. Because if you don't have a walking with the Lord on a daily basis lifestyle, the enemy is going to eat you alive. And this is why you must have a diligence about yourself because all of these powers are real. All of these spirits are real, but none of them are in, um, should I say, none of them are uh, outside of the control of the power of God's word and the power of God himself. So you must understand, God will never ever allow the devil to have any kind of power over you and I on this earth, below the earth, or over, above the earth. He will never allow any power that the devil has that he can't match. So you must understand, it is your responsibility to get the word of God, to get the power of God visible and working in your life so you won't have to fear. However, in incidents uh, there's an incident that occurred when we in the Word of God where we saw God remove this restriction. And the way in which we saw God remove this restriction about the waters, when man who dominated the earth sinned, check out Genesis 6, verses 6 and 7. Look what it says. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I, have, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I had made them. God repented that he had made man, beast, fowl of the air. And to sum all that up real quickly, what did God use to destroy man, beast, and the fowl? Of, what did he use? He used water. God used the water kingdom to come and destroy the earth as he had made it. And the reason why he did that was because man had become so wicked in Genesis 6 when the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they began to procreate. And that's when giants were being made. And God says, it repented my heart that I have made man. So he destroyed it. But he didn't use fire. No. Mm -mm. He didn't. He didn't use even his angels. He could have had his angels come down and destroy, but he didn't. He used the water powers. Because look what it says in Genesis 7, 18. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upward, I mean, went upon the face of the waters. So God used the water powers to destroy the land the first time. And what does prevail mean? The waters prevail. It means to fight and overcome. So God restricted them to do any harm to the earth. 
Then God said, okay, I draw my restriction back. Go ahead and destroy the earth. Go ahead and deal with it. And guess what? All of those water spirits destroyed everything. So now, look at it one more time. God allowed this to happen. But the only way the restriction could be moved is if God had removed it. So it's not where you don't think that the water spirits just have authority to do what they want. They have to have a legal right. And the way you give them the legal right is by being sexually immoral. It's by doing things that are perverted. It's by living an immoral life. It's by having an imagination that is no longer governed by the things of God. It's by having a lustful spirit, lusting after this, lusting after that, wanting this, wanting that. You could be the one that had it because you're the one that decided to open the door, or you could have born into it from your generation. But however, people of God, you must get a hold of it and choke the very life out of it because it's destroying you and your family. That man that had that unclean spirit, I promise you, not only was he distraught, but his family was distraught. His livelihood was distraught. His health was distraught. Why? Because the enemy doesn't come in and want to do a little bit with one thing. He wants to deal with the whole shebang. So let me close it out so we can pray and get out of here. Fact 14, when water is in control, it is very destructive. Look at Genesis 7, 18 through 23. When water is allowed, water, the water, when allowed, the water did not only destroy what the earth had produced, but the water also destroyed its own labor. Nothing was left except those in Noah's ark. When you see a, a person who at one point is immensely wealthy, then all of a sudden it seems everything disappears, then be assured that that person's life is governed by water powers. Be assured that when you see somebody that is wealthy and everything's going great, and the next time you see them, they're down and out with nothing, water powers just came and sucked everything from them. Now, I'm going to rush to where I said the spirit husband and spirit wives comes in, into play. Here it is. In Genesis 8, 2, and 3, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. That's when God put them back in check. That's when God told the water spirits and water powers, go back, no more. However, something else occurred. This is why you have spirit husbands and spirit wives. When God said for them to go back, not everybody wanted to return. Not everybody wanted to go back to the waters. Some of them stayed on the earth. And some of them stayed on the earth. And the only way they could be of any type of a usefulness, they have to have a body. Because they are disembodied spirits. So this is how they seek to dwell within other people's bodies. And this is how you have spirit husbands and spirit wives. Because it is in a bid for them to dwell in man that the issue of spirit spouses or what we call spirit husband and spirit wives originated. In order for them to have a bold on the earth, because remember we said to be legal here on this earth, you have to have what? A body. And so these spirits did not listen. They did not obey. They stayed on the earth after they did their destruction of the first creation. And then they decided, since we're here, we need bodies. Such spirits come out of the water to conduct spiritual marriages with men. This is why we have spirit spouses spirit husbands, spirit wives, and spirit marriages. By doing this, they secure their right to live where man lives as well as return to the water at will. That's why they can come into you, take all of your virtue, take all of your goods, take all of your anointing, steal everything that you have, and bring it back down to the waters. I heard my pastor some years ago pray like this, and I never understood it, but I used to pray it. But now I see what she means. 
She said this. She said, the earth is going to open up her legs and give me what belongs to me. That's what that's talking about. I never understood it. She was just a spiritual giant as it relates to demonic warfare. And she said, you know, one day in praying that the earth was going to open her legs and give her what belongs to her. People of God, I'm telling you that your blessings are locked up in the water kingdom. Your blessings, your virtues, your strengths, your businesses, your joy, your peace, your oneness, with your, with your spot is all locked up. Because you are joined to a spirit husband and a spirit wife. Because somebody along the way made the choice to be sexually immoral, to be morally debased, to open up themselves to an unclean spirit. And I'm talking to these young people of peace. You can think you're big, bad, and bold enough if you want to go around having sexual relationships with people. But I promise you, there is no safe sex but the sex inside of your marriage. Because even if your partner is not faithful, your God, if you trust him, will keep you and protect you even while you have a creeping partner. But you have no protection when you are having sex outside of marriage. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. And these water spirits can even get you because guess what? You can tell when they're in your children and you can tell when they've entered in your life because you have, you have a change in your walk. They even alter your walk. These spirits even have animalistic uh, spirits that come upon people and they have crocodile, they have um, it was the shark. They have all of these. They have the octopus. And then it tells you how these different spirits operate in a human. And as I was reading it, I was blown away. I can't give you all that today. But as I was reading it, I was blown away. Because it does, it does immediately, it shows you that how people, how when women walk, they sway. That's, that's, that's dealing with the fish walk. That's, that's the walk. When the spirit husbands enter the woman, her, her walk changes, the little girl, whoever, the walk, that's because that, 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 that's the sway of the sea. And that's that walk. We also have different businesses that have uh, logos that comes from the water spirit. You know, uh, what's, that, what's that place with the coffee? Uh, Starbucks. Their logo is like a mermaid with something else. But that's from the that's from the sea. See these this, these 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 different spirits are trying to get in a boat. So if you make images of them and you put them in the earth realm, guess what? They're able to come and be a part of it because you're giving them space to be there. So okay, we're not getting to all that, but let me just say this: we can see by a preponderance of things in the land or in the midst of men that relate to the water. This is not a coincidence as such powers use these as a means of raising altars in the earth, which further gives them a legal ground to do well amongst men. But I just finished saying, when they see their different um, images and their in the different logos and even different names like Nigeria is from the name of a Ni um, Niger River. It's derived from the river Ni Ni Niger. So, huh? Yeah, so Niger. So then you have uh, Jamaica. It means wood and water or marsh, marshy land. You even have um, Cyprus. It's the name of a sea god. So the more these names and the more these images are put into the earth, this is allowing these demonic spirits to take home and to take charge and to take hold of the land that they should not be on. So people of God, I'm going to stop here because this is what I wanted to get to. That the spirit spouses that comes in through all sorts of things, different ways in which they can come in, spiritual perversion of all kinds. But this is what they do. They come from the marine kingdom. And if you know of anything that has happened in your life, whether you were raped, molested, whether you um, had you know fornication, adultery, Pornography, incest, masturbation, oral sex, anal sex, all of it. All of it is opening you up. I'm telling you, don't let people misuse your body. Don't let people bring you to a place of degradation. Some people have these sexual um, needs and desires because they've been, they've been tainted. They're unclean. 
And so you come in dealing with somebody, don't know who they are, what they are, where they come from, and now they want to turn you out because they've been turned out. So you must understand that these th this is not normal. That is not the kind of sexual relationship that God chose for his people. Do you understand that? So when you open yourself up to these type of sexual activities, you are opening yourself up to unclean spirits. I heard a man of God say, and I, I said it one time before, and people didn't like it, but I'm going to say it again anyway. He said, if God intended for you to have oral sex, he would have put a penis on your forehead. And I, <laughs> it's okay to laugh. I, la I laughed so hard, I probably couldn't hear the last, next few words he said. Because I'm going to tell you something, the church has been teaching on this for a long time. And there was a lot of people in the church that were writing books and they were having these big conferences and they were talking about the fact that you got to, you know, you got to, you got to affair proof your marriage. I don't care how much you affair proof your marriage. If you married to somebody who don't have any type of boundaries over their sexual activity, you can jump up and down. You can split. You can do uh, flips and stuff from the from the uh, here. What is this here? Chandelier. From the chandelier. But if that person wants to have an affair, that person is going to have an affair. Stop allowing the devil to make you stupid and get into stuff that God never intended for you to be into. Yes, I said it. Oral sex is not of God. It is not God's intent. And what you have to do when you're getting rid of these demonic forces that have invaded your life, you got to get rid of it wherever you, whatever you use to get it, whether it was your mouth, your butt, or your private area, you got to call the demons out of those areas. Because those demons have now come and they have a taste, they have a, 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 a smell, they have all kinds of things that they hold on to in your life. I'm trying to help you to get free. Because the enemy is not going to tell you this. And many churches is not going to say it because they got a whole lot of people in the church from the pulpit on that's bound by these sexual activities and these sexual demons. How many of you ready to be free? Amen. How many of you ready to let the Marine Kingdom know that you can't have my goods? Amen. I had a list of stuff that this one said too that would let you know if you're operating in this type of situation. Oh, here it is. Look at this. The effects of such spirits in a person's life include this. Marital problems, non-marriage, late marriage, financial difficulty, constant quarrels between husband and wife, sexual immorality, and uncontrollable sexual urges and desires. You can be a person who just sitting around chilling. But if you have no kind of boundaries over your sexual desires, the devil can make you go and sleep with the same sex. He can make you go and sleep with an animal. If you don't have any type of boundaries in your spirit, shameful sexual habits and lustful thinking is another effect of such spirits in a person. Marriage failure and divorce is another reason for these spirits being active in people's lives barrenness, and even miscarriages. So I'm saying, sharing this to you, how do you know if you have such problems? If you're involved in sexual sins, if you have sex in the dreams, if you're born beside and still attached to the riverside area, if you see yourself in the dreams by a river, love for things of the sea, the seafood, the bar beach, the shell. That's why I told you I had a set of lamps in here <laughs> that were a shell bottom. It had a, a clear bottom, but it was beautiful shells and all sorts of things from the, from the sea. When I read this, the minute I read it, the next minute I was getting those lamps, throwing them on the floor of the garage and breaking them into pieces because I don't want nothing of the marine kingdom in my home. Check your home. If you got things, pictures, I'm about to stop. And if you got to go, I, I understand. But if you have things in your home, pictures and um, different little artifacts or what have you, that's from the sea, that's replica of the sea, you got them in your room, get rid of them. Because wherever you have the devil's things, that's where he wants to be and that's where he can be because that gives him a right because his stuff is there. 
If you have ornaments that are shaped in the form of creatures from the sea, get rid of them. You don't need those ornaments. You don't need that. You don't even need it. It ain't even pretty. Get rid of it. If it was pretty, it's pretty no more. Get rid of it. Love for images and pictures that relate to or from under the sea. I'm telling you, I've been looking around my house, looking at walls. I'm about to go do a check in my children's rooms, drawers, everything. Because anything that's in your home that can relate to the devil in any way, shape, or form, he has a legal right to be in your house. So I shared all of that. I'm not going to let you go, but all of that on your mind. We're going to pray a few prayers, and we're going to get out of here, and I'll continue on Wednesday. But I'm telling you, people of God, I keep mentioning spirit husbands, spirit wives. I keep mentioning evil marriages, and I wanted to show you today where they stem from this marine kingdom, and it is time for you and I. It is time for people of God. It is time for the, the, the house of God, the church, the body of Christ. It is time for us to get free from these spirits that are seducing us, taking our money, taking our joy, taking our families, taking our children hostage, and all we're doing is sitting around saying, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I tried my best. I did what I was supposed to. No, you didn't, because you didn't deal with your foundation. Yes, Lord. It's time to deal with it. We're going to do three prayers, and we're going to get out of here. I want us to pray these prayers right now. We're going to pray them by faith. We're going to pray them with everything in us, and then we're going to close out today. And on Wednesday, the Lord say the same. We're going to come back with a little bit more explanation. But people of God, I'm telling you, if you're not doing any homework once you hear these, these messages, if you're not going back and listening to them and getting some more information to do, guess what? You don't want to be free. And I can't make you want to be free. All I know is, for me and mine, the devil owed me. And he owed me big time. And I'm getting it all back. God says it's my time to pursue to overtake and recover all, and I refuse to let any devil in hell to take what belongs to me. Everybody, <clears throat> with all the faith in your heart, we're going to begin to pray these three prayers, and we're going to get out of here. They're pretty, pretty long, so just get ready. Say, every marine witchcraft spirit. Every marine witchcraft spirit. Every marine witchcraft spirit. That has introduced spirit wife or spirit husbands. That has introduced spirit wife or spirit husbands. In my dreams. In my dreams. In my dreams. Be roasted by fire. Be roasted by fire. Be roasted by fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to say that another time. I want you to say it with a little bit more power. Say every marine witchcraft spirit. Every marine witchcraft spirit. Every marine that has introduced spirit husbands and spirit wives. That has introduced spirit husband and spirit wives. In my dreams. In my dreams. Be roasted by fire. Be roasted by fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, the next prayer, I want you to pray with all the faith in your heart. Say, every agent of marine witchcraft. Every agent of marine witchcraft. Every agent of marine witchcraft. Posing as my husband or my wife. Posing as my husband or my wife. As my husband or my wife. In my dream. In my dream. In my dream. Is consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Is consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. All right, let's pray this one all the faith in our heart, people of God. Every agent of marine witchcraft. Every agent of marine witchcraft. Every agent of marine witchcraft. Physically attached to my marriage. Physically attached to my marriage. To frustrate it. To frustrate it. To frustrate it. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die, die, die. die. Die and die again. Amen. That's it. Die, 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 and die yes, again. Amen. Yes, yes. Now, if you're not married and you were married, and you can still say it. If you're not married and you're about to get married, you can still say it. Even if you're not married and you're not trying to get married, still say it. Because I promise you that these things are have to give way to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that any witchcraft practices under any water assigned against our lives let it receive judgment of fire in the name of jesus lord let every evil altar under the water upon which certain evils are done against us 
be roasted in the name of Jesus. Every priest, oh God, that's ministering at the evil altar against us inside any water, we command that priest now to fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Any power under any river or sea that's remotely controlling the lives of God's people be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Come on. And I shake myself loose. Come on, shake yourself. Yeah, yeah, I shake yeah, myself yeah. loose from your hole. Come on, shake yourself yeah, loose. I yeah. shake myself yeah. loose from your hole. Yeah. I shake myself loose yeah. from your hole. Come on, shake yourself loose. Shake yeah. yourself loose. Yeah. Shake yourself loose from the hole. Come on, yeah. shake your head. That's a sign of your destiny. Yeah. Come on, shake your arms. Shake yeah. your hands. Shake your legs right now in the name of Jesus. Every agent of marine yeah. witchcraft yeah. assigned to attack our finances through dreams, we command you to fall down and die and perish in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, that we pull down every stronghold of bewitchment, enchantment, jinx, or divination fashioned against us by marine witches in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Let us all say a sevenfold amen. 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 And amen. 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 Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And after I say this, one last thing we're going to go. I right now command every person who is chained by your leg and by your arm, by any witchcraft devil, I break that chain now off of you in the name of Jesus. And if you believe that's for you, go ahead on and give the Lord three glorious hallelujah. the bondage of marine witches in the name of Jesus. Yes, Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you now that as we put this battle into your hand, we commend it into your hands and we say, Father, fight for us. Yes. We say, God, arise. And destroy every spirit that is opposing our lives, our families, our marriages, our businesses, our finances, God, our ministries, our homes, our relationships, our children, oh God, their futures, in the name and through the blood. And we say, let God arise and let every enemy be scattered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 People of God, I'm going to dismiss right now. I have to do some praying in here still, but I'm going to dismiss you all. You are free to go and worship the Lord the rest of the day and enjoy your family. We're going to do more of this. I know this was a long teaching, but it is going to be get better when you get to the point of knowing about this and being able to fight and stand in your place and know that the greater one is in you. No devil in hell should be running amok on your life because God has made it possible for you and I to be free. You don't want to be hooked up with no spirit husband. You don't want to be hooked up with no spirit wife. They come to destroy your life, your marriage, your finances, your health, and everything about you. And we decree and declare we will not go let the devil steal from us any longer. He's stolen all he's going to stole. He's done all he's going to do. It's our turn now in Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands in Jesus' mighty name. I wish all of you were here so I can lay hands on you. But I'm going to lay hands on the people that's right here before me in the name of Jesus. And then I'm going to get out of here. They may not want to be on camera, so I probably can't let you see it. But you all be blessed. Be encouraged. We love you. Have a blessed, blessed day in the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace, prosperity, joy unspeakable, and full of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray that every heart say, Amen. Amen. Be back here Wednesday doing more about this teaching, giving you more information. Keep your head up. Walk through your house and let the devil know his day is over. Love you much. Bye-bye. Tell me.
All right, I love you all. Be blessed. You gotta go.